This little guy has given me an idea of what I want to make next. Hi, my name is Diane, and this is my Pink Bathtub Knits. Welcome. I have a lot to share with you today, so let's just jump right in. I have transitioned from Wednesday to Friday episodes to give myself some more time to craft during the week and for hopefully more viewers to catch my episodes on the weekend. So I hope you don't mind, but I just feel it's a better fit for me for my week. What am I wearing? Well, guess what? The blocking did its job, and this sweater is 15 years old, and I'm finally going to be able to enjoy it. Here's a little background story about this sweater. I knitted as a new knitter. It was really tight under the armpit. I wore it once, not having a lot of knowledge on what to do with the blocking. I let it sit and sit and sit and sit. And when I was doing my other blocking for my advent sweater, I thought to myself, where'd that sweater go? I just love the color. I just love it. This is leaf green in the Patton's Classic Merino Wool. Yes, it may be a little bit hot, but it has a lot more room now. I'm sorry to my niece, you are not getting this sweater. It is now mine, and I absolutely adore the color, and I'm so glad I decided to give it a block. Now, when I was blocking it, I'm not going to lie, I manhandled the heck out of this sweater. I literally pulled it from under the arm. Um, I know you're not supposed to do that because you don't technically want stuff to grow, but in this case, I wanted it to grow. So. I'm thrilled. I'm so thrilled to be wearing this sweater. You have no idea. The pattern of this sweater is found in this book from Patton's Classic Wool, Fall in Love. And yeah, I think it, I mean, I'm no model, but I think the sweater looks the same on me as it does on her kind of like more of a cardigan because it's got the open thing but I like the idea of it not having buttons but it was still closed so I kind of like it what do you guys think of it this episode was brought to you by ducky mittens these are the toddler ducky mittens that I make And I include mitten clips with them. So I've just been going through my mitten clips that I have and working on mittens to match the color of the clips. Uh, I feel kids enjoy duckies, like this little guy. I love it when customers send me photos of children wearing my knittables because it just it brings me so much joy. You have no idea. So yeah, these are little duckies. This pattern is, I just kind of created the ducky out of this, out of my head. But this pattern, just to make the basic mittens, is the World's Simplest Mitten Pattern by Tin Can Knits. I know I'm going to talk about them a lot, but I, this is what I always use for kid sizes. You can make adult size mittens with them as well. And some of the yarn that I have, like that nice, thick, bulky alpaca, I'm just going to make plain simple mittens with it using their pattern in a bulky weight. So that'll be something that I'm going to be doing in the near future. I have a few other things that I finished this week and one of them is the hat from Tin Can's Knit, uh, the barley hat. So let's put it on, see how it looks. This is just a hat that I'm going to wear when I'm out and about in wintertime. Well, there was a little bit extra here, but I guess we can just slouch it down. Now, you can't really tell from this pattern, so I will put a picture of it here because of the variegation in the yarn, but it is like purling in the front. It's a cute little, very simple winter hat. I'm planning to make a cowl to go with it, and uh, that will be the use of my yarn, which I bought from 
crux fibers up in the Yukon. A little more of a natural type wool. I don't have an aversion to itching wool at all. It's going to be a perfect little gift to myself for this winter weather. But speaking of winter, my goodness, it is warmed up here in Manitoba. Unbelievably plus temperatures now. I cannot believe it. I do have other finished objects, but since this is right here, my nemesis, as I call it, the McGinnis cardigan is very slowly growing. I haven't really done anything, but here we go. It is longer. I guess I should put um, a progress keeper. I'm only on my second ball of yarn, so I don't think I'm going to be using five balls of yarn with this. But I also had to really change the gauge and have a lot less stitches on it than what the pattern recommended. So I'll get there with it. I'm just just not into it because there's so many more exciting things I'd rather be knitting. Okay. I have to say this elephant that I made from this book, the Knitted Nursery Collection from Jem Weston is fantastic. And I was not looking forward to seaming it up because you had to knit it flat but it just took shape so beautifully as the seaming went along. And I'm going to make more of him because I am obsessed with him. I had a bit of trouble with this guy, the trunk. But I had to kind of knit him and I kind of I tightened him up so the trunk would curve. And the trunk, I'll put him on the ottoman and show him the trunk is actually used for stabilization because the head is so heavy he would just fall over. And of course the butt, like that butt, I gotta like, yeah, it's a little curly cue. A lot of seaming done on this toy, but it was just a joy to make, just a joy. I would, I would make him again. So this was made with classic merino wool from Patton's. And this is all I have left of the full ball. And then the accents. So I think I have some more of this cool gray color. So I think I am going to make a few more for my markets because I think elephants are quite popular. And I'm just going to do different ears and foot pads for them. Like I have some uh, pink ones and blue ones and stuff. And this is a more of a neutral guy. So I guess I kind of twisted his. You know what, the first time you make something, there's always kind of like a learning curve, but I actually really enjoyed the seaming up and I think I did really well at the seaming up. Most of it was done turned inside out, but then the basically the trunk and the butt I had to keep open so I could stuff him and then um, kind of worked a little bit on that. I think I might redo the tassel because he's not the best, but great first attempt. I just love him so much that I am diving into that book again and I'm going to cast on another animal. So I have this other pattern in mind and I have found the yarn for it and my goodness gracious, it's a squirrel. Ginger the squirrel. Like look at that tail. Yeah is I'm gonna do this for the main color of the body. This color is called Desert. When I ordered it, it ended up looking a lot more um, orange in person. So it's just been sitting in my stash. I have a couple balls of this, so if this goes well, we may do another one. And then this is gonna be the color of this scarf for the squirrel. And this is called Jade Heather. I'm going to get that on my needle this week because I always want to have a toy on the go for my markets. Another update, uh, Mary Maxim sent me a replacement kit and it matches. So I sent back the other one. So very good customer service. It was just a shame that the original kit wasn't quality controlled better. But this is the yarn for the uh, sock club of the month, the quarterly sock club. If you're interested in joining it, it's $12.99 every three months. 
I feel like I'm ripping through this episode, but I have a lot to say. Uh, let's go to the Canada road trip yarn now. We have left British Columbia. And then after the Canadian yarn, we are going to talk about a mal that I joined, which I am very excited about. So get ready. We're going back in the car to Alberta, Canada. There are so many amazing Canadian dyers in Alberta, Canada. When I think of Alberta, I think of Canadian cowboys with the um, Calgary Stampede. I also think of their amazing highways because it is like driving on glass. If you ever come to Manitoba, please, I implore you, bring a spare hubcap. Some of our roads are just terrible. We are going to Borealis Fibers. They are out of Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, they have an Etsy shop, so I'm going to link their shop below. And they are also on Instagram and Facebook. And I decided for this time, uh, I also had bought from them during my shopping frenzy of Boxing Day week, and they had a 20% off sale. They also flat pack ship, so they vacuum seal your yarn. And when folks do that, you end up getting two, up to two regular size Hanks yarn can be done this way. Um, but I bought minis, my friends, and I bought yellow minis. Now, Judy, look away, look away, you're not going to like this. But I feel like yellow complements gray so well and one of the things I really want to do is to learn how to do color work well because uh, I always am very uh, tight when it comes to pulling the the strand of yarn carrying the strand over in the back so that's something I want to work on and I think these yellows would look absolutely beautiful in a yoke sweater with gray so that's kind of what I'm leaning towards I'm going to show you them here. Again, Judy, avert your eyes, Judy, avert your eyes. This is what I chose. I don't know. It just spoke to me, these minis. For some reason, let's go on to the ottoman and take a closer look. Now, this colorway is called Golden Fade. You get five 20-gram minis for a total of 370 yards in total. It is 80% merino and a 20% nylon fingering weight yarn. I just, I just love this. The sun is coming in quite brightly right now, so it may be, uh, no, that's accurate. These colors are accurate. Just the pale to the warm golden, it's just, mwah. I just, it really spoke to me. And uh, I guess it's a sign of um, maybe having too much yarn. I really struggled finding something that, like, what can I, trying to be mindful in what I was buying, what can I get that's kind of different as opposed to buying your two standard fingering weight yarns or a 1DK. And I thought this was right up my alley. So I have no customer service info to really share with you because it was essentially a very seamless purchase. Yeah. Just beautiful, beautiful bouquet of yellow. I have at least two more Alberta yarns to share with you this month. I think that's it. I mean, I could have just kept going, but, you know, this girl's not going to have enough gas to get across Canada if she buys all her yarn in one province. So we've got to slow our roll. So I'll share with you another one next week. This is going to go into my yarn room in an organza bag to sit and patiently wait until I perfect my color work a little bit more because I feel this is going to be a yoke in a sweater. No news to report about my cross stitch project. I haven't picked it up this week at all because I was very busy with that elephant. 
I'm hoping to get to it this week and put a little bit more color into it and I will show you when there's something new to show you. Now the next project I was planning to do was with my whiskey in a teacup yarn from Gage Dye Works from British Columbia and I had like I was all in this to win it and I even caked it up. I got it all ready to go. Here's the photo of the shawl. And then, squirrel, I saw something. And the something I saw that is making this unfortunately be put on hold just till this other project is done is the Mal that is going to be running by Gina and Judy. I've got notes here so I don't mess this up because this is important. So Gina from the Knitting Turnpike had Judy on as her guest again, her co-star. This is the second time they did a live, and of course I went. And they announced a mal that they are doing. And the great thing about this mal, it, it is craft inclusive. There is a knitting version and a crochet version, so everyone can join. And I'm doing it. I am doing this. I am super into this. First of all, the live was so much fun because they shared the colors that they were going to do for the Mal, and Judy is going out of her comfort zone totally, and I think Gina's going to do blue. Like, it's probably going to be announced for sure by the time this airs, but I was pushing for team blue on this. She had two options. Both of the patterns are by Heather J. Anderson who is also known as the Unraveled Mitten on Instagram. So I'm going to link that below. I'm also going to link the live below, the replay of the live, because all of the information is in there. And boy, I had so much fun on that live. I apologize to anyone who does lives. I don't usually catch them very often, but that one was a must-see, and I was just right into it. It was so much fun. Um, so... The two people that are putting them on is Gina from Knitting Turnpike and Judy from Judy's Creations in Crochet. Gina knits, Judy crochets. I think Gina crochets, but not as much as knitting. And the two patterns that they are doing is called, I don't have the um, crochet pattern name in front of me. I know it starts with an R. Here it is. I think it's called Reverie, Reverie Wrap. And so this can be done by crocheters. It usually takes three um, hanks of yarn in fingering weight. The one for the knitters is called the Efflores Wrap. I hope I said that right. It looks like efflorescent, but efflores. Efflores Wrap. What does efflores mean? I'm going to efflores the heck out of this wrap, I tell ya. Uh, okay, so this, this knit one, it uh, takes 650 yards. And I wanted to use some of my Aberdeen's wool um, minis, which are 30 grams. So they're 110 yards from my holiday box. But I could only find four that were really complimentary. And I threw in a lichen and lace skein of pressed flowers. I'm going to show you all of that right now. It'll take a 3.75 millimeter needle. That's the recommendation. I am not doing a gauge swatch on this because I am lazy, my friends. It is a paid pattern in Ravelry. I'm going to link that below. I'm going to link the live below. I'm going to link the two ladies I mentioned below. And I am super stoked about this. Uh, there is a Facebook group that has started. Uh, for the Mal, and I will link that below because I don't remember the name of it. I'm on it. Uh, so go check that out. There's also a hashtag that you can use for Instagram, hashtag Turnpike Creations Mal24. I'll link that below. And you can also put Turnpike Creations Mal24 
in your Ravelry project when you create the project and share the yarn you have for it. And then everyone can see it. Judy has a discussion group open up on her Ravelry as well. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I met some really cool people that I hadn't met before on the live and started, I subscribed to them. So that was cool as well. And I spent uh, earlier today, this is being pre-recorded, so I might have it half made by the time you see this. Of course, I had to make it difficult on myself and I picked five colors, but I've looked through the pattern and I've kind of charted it out how I think I want it to go. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, I was going to make it larger, but I think I'm just going to, Maybe I'll make it a little bit wider because I do have the extra yarn for it. It seems like a pretty easy um, pattern to follow. So I'm excited about this. I'm excited to also see what other people are going to come up with in terms of colors. And the knitting and the crochet pattern look very similar. In the knitting, there's lots of yarn overs. I don't know what that's called in crochet speak. I apologize. But uh, looks very, very similar. So that's kind of the cool thing about it is it's the same designer making a knit version and a crochet version of a wrap and everyone and anyone can join. So I hope you consider joining. It's going to be going on until March the 6th. So there's lots of time to get it done and get it on your needles. I encourage you to check it out. And they're going to show the finished uh, projects in a live on March the 9th in a slideshow. There's going to be prizes and things to be won as well. But I think the prize is just getting this done and to meeting the people and building on the community of the Yarny community here. And I think it's going to be so much fun. I really like this sweater. I just love this color. <sighs> I'm not going to have a sweater to show you next week. I feel like I had a lot done this week. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, I retired in June. And, you know, I don't really have a very big structure in my day. But let me tell you, my day goes so fast. I am a big putterer. And I am constantly uh, working on projects. I went for uh, lunch to see my friend the other week. And she said, what do you do with your time? And it is such a true statement that time just flies by when you're at home. Time goes so quickly when you're retired. There is not enough time in the day. Let me tell you. So I'm excited about this week. I'm going to work on my squirrel. I'm going to work on my kitten mittens with the beautiful yarn that Kathy sent me. I'm going to start my wrap and maybe I'll get to my McGinnis card again. I want to do some cross stitch too. So... You know what? I'm going to love you and leave you, and I hope you're doing well. I hope you don't mind the new time slot of Friday. Uh, you know, if I have something fun and short and cool to say, I might do a little mini episode on Wednesdays, but not every week. Uh, so enjoy your weekend, my friends. I hope to see you again soon, and please go check out that Mel. I do not think you will be disappointed. It's already been a lot of fun, and I haven't even cast on. So I'm going to cast on right now. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.